Greetings to you on this holy Saturday. Saturdays of the Tridium weekend is generally a quiet day without any celebration of a Eucharist. But I thought I would share another poem from Janet Molly's book called The Heart's Time. And the poem is called, And That Will Be Heaven. And that will be heaven. And that will be heaven. At last, the first unclouded seeing. To stand like the sunflower, turned full face to the sun, drenched with light, in the still centre held, while the circling planets hum with an outer joy, seeing and knowing at last, in every particle, seen and known, and not turning away, never turning away again. This poem seems to seek a direct gaze to the expectation of heaven, The poem begins and ends as if it in the middle of a sentence. Ordinary punctuation is absent. There are just pauses and the turning of lines, but the pace is slow rather than exuberant. No sentence is actually completed. It is as if the narrator is caught up in something where it is not possible or not necessary to finish sentences. There are things that cannot be said in a final way, and this doesn't matter. Inarticulacy is the point. That will be heaven is a common enough exaggeration we use to express satisfaction with an arrangement that looks as if it will work well for us. Here the phrase is repeated after a line gap, as if to underline that a quite different view of what is genuinely heaven is in order. The tone is not severe or critical. It is just taking us down several levels of depth. At last, rather like the Rossetti poem, this is a stage. It is implied that it is reached after a lifetime of earnest searching. The first unclouded seeing and the later, in every particle, seen and known, remind us of the great hymn to love. For now we see in mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 12 The passage in 2 Corinthians 3 verses 14 to 18 about veiled and unveiled faces, may also be behind the poem. Within this biblical mysticism, the poem offers the image of the sunflower, turned full face to the sun. The French word for the flower, tenorsol, explicitly highlights what his dramatic plant actually does during the day, when it is in blossom, in bloom. It literally turns around to present its face to wherever the sun is in the sky. At the same time, the sun-like shape of the flower head makes it seem as if the sunflower has taken on the very countenance of the thing it lives by and seems to worship. The turning of the sunflower by day is mirrored in the galaxies with the circling of the planet in the night sky around the sun which is the centre of the gravitational path and the reason why they exist and move at all. Throughout our lives, we inevitably go through a pattern of being distracted and turned away from God and then consciously, as in Lent, turning aside to try to approach and gaze at God once more. As we have seen, to gaze directly is not given to us in this life. The poet here imagines heaven as a place where there is no longer impossible. May it be true. Spend time in silence with your heart. Turn full face to the sun. God bless you. 
Amen.